as we move on with our series of mini lectures, um, we are focusing on why the mathematical models that we've developed to describe optical systems don't predict ideal performance and looking at ways to understand uh, this non-ideality or aberrations and also on how to improve performance. So last time we looked at some of the the issues that happened when you violated the praxial approximation. Uh, with an ideal lens, of course, you get perfectly spherical phase fronts uh, that look like these, these dashed black lines, but in an aberrated system, one that doesn't fully follow the praxial approximation, uh, we've learned that rays bend more than an ideal system, and since they bend more, uh, they travel a little bit farther, and the phase front Remember, the phase front is defined to be the surface that's normal to all the rays going through the system. The phase front bends more, as is shown by the dashed red line here. And essentially what this corresponds to is that all the rays that start at a given point don't happen to meet at the given point you'd expect if you did the praxial calculation. But rather, there's an area we call the circle of least confusion, where the rays are closest together but don't meet. And we quantify our aberrations by a distance delta d that is the separation between the ideal phase front and the aberrated phase front. And large values of delta d correspond to large aberrations and images that are blurry and don't look very good. Um, in order to quantify this and come up with analytical solutions, we use what's known as a third order approximation, where we do the series expansion of sine of theta into two terms, one is the third order term, and the first order term, of course, is our praxial approximation. And we found that this gives us a solution of the form of a polynomial equation that has some constant coefficients that depend on the lens, r, h, and cosine of theta. Looking at this in a little bit more detail, historically, names are given to these five coefficients that, that represent delta d. The term that varies as r to the fourth power is known as spherical aberration. Uh, there's also coma, which varies as the image height in r to the third power, astigmatism, field curvature, and distortion. Um, each of these terms has a scaling factor that depends on the details or specifics of the lens, its curvature, the glass type, and things like that. And it's beyond the scope of this class or this lecture to calculate these things. The amount of aberration we see, depending on each of these terms, scales with the radius out from the center of the lens, and that is r. The size of the image, h sub i, given right here, and a term proportional to cosine theta, where theta is essentially the angle between the plane uh, that contains the object Im image point and the optical axis, and the point the rays hit on the lens. And really, you have to imagine a three-dimensional lens here. A uh, two-dimensional drawing just doesn't do it to describe theta. And, and you can look this up in books, and you can see these five terms. And you can see that each of these different types of aberrations varies as a different function of r, the distance out or size of the lens, the size of the image that's formed by the lens or the imaging system, and also cosine theta, or the angle the ray hits. And so let's look at spherical aberration, coma, astigmatism, field curvature, and distortion in a little bit more detail here. The, the most common type of aberration is spherical aberration. And what you see in this image right here is a simulation in optics lab of a lot of rays going through a lens at the best possible focus. That's not may not be visible in the video, but this has a, a one millimeter field of view. Um, and what spherical aberration is, essentially, is the fact that the circle of least confusion of all the rays is much bigger than a spot. If you look, in fact, at the, the best possible image that you could possibly get, and this looks like rings of concentric circles, and we'll get into this in a future mini-lecture, but if you look at the image with spherical aberration, you can see that this spot where the light's concentrated has gotten much larger due to spherical aberration. And uh, if you look at the equations, uh, what you're going to find is spherical aberration is essentially proportional to r to the fourth power. So if your lens increases in size, spherical aberration increases dramatically with the diameter of the lens. And the way you can reduce or minimize spherical aberration is to reduce the lens diameter or put it in an aperture that acts as an effective 
uh, way to reduce the diameter of 